Hi, my name is David Larmer. I'm 18 years old and rugby was my life. I grew up loving sport and started playing football from a young age and then finally moved to rugby. From P6, I started taking rugby very seriously and was training two times a week and playing a match every Saturday. This led to a complete obsession with the sport. When I hit first year, my dream was to go to INST or RBAI as they were the best rugby school in all of Northern Ireland and one of the best in all of Ireland. From first year, I was dedicated to playing rugby. This meant training a further four times a week and also playing a match every Saturday. This dedication gave me a sense of purpose. It gave me a sense of routine to follow, something that was very important to me. It also taught me how to become the best version of myself, while also teaching me teamwork, discipline and self-control. All those years of hard work and training finally led to the big year for schoolboy rugby, as we began trailing and setting our eyes on the medallion shield. This is one of the most prestigious awards you can win when playing schoolboy rugby, and we wanted to get our hands on it. We trained intensely every day, had matches every Saturday, had training during the day, had gym before school started in the morning, tactical meetings, and also team runs on the Friday morning. When the day finally arrived to play in the final, the nerves were apparent. This was the biggest game of rugby I had ever played in my life. It was also the most important as all the years of hard work and dedication finally led to this moment. I was excited to get in the pitch and play. All the years had finally paid off, but it was all cut short. Just after the hour mark of the match, I got tackled from a rock and landed awkwardly on my knee. I fell to the ground and heard a pop. I tried to get back up and run, but was unable to. This led to me falling over a couple of times and being in excruciating pain. This was both mentally and physically draining. All the years of hard work had led to this moment and I couldn't even finish the match. Coming off, I was trying to hide my tears, but my pain was just too much. We ended up losing the match 20 points to 15 and this made it even worse. After this match, I went into a downward spiral. My mood was at an all time low and was constant. I had no motivation to do anything. I couldn't walk for two months and I couldn't walk for a further two months without the use of crutches. I also started comfort eating and putting on a lot of weight. This led me to being quite big. So yes, as you just heard, that was a bit about myself. I love playing sport until the day I couldn't. But now, three years later, my mental health is doing a lot better and my physical health is also doing a lot better. I'm going to the gym a lot more. My mental health is doing a lot better because I'm talking to more people about it. During this time as well, it was very tough for me because I was speaking to a lot of different people, such as my parents, different therapists, just seeing what I could do differently to try and better my mental health. In this documentary, we're gonna be looking at a couple of different things. We're gonna be looking at the physical aspect, the mental health aspect, and the recovery aspect. All three on my part, I do feel are particularly the same as everyone relies on each other. So, in this documentary, we're going to be looking at two other people's stories who shared the sort of same outcome as myself, who loved playing sport and one day it was taken away from them and who aren't able to play as much anymore. This is Sport Tackling Mental Health. So, the first story we're going to be taking a look at is Lucy's story. Lucy was a prominent young footballer who had a bright career ahead of her. Unfortunately, due to an unforeseen injury, that future was all cut short. So we're going to take a look at her story now.
I'm joined here by my good friend Lucy. So Lucy, do you want to give us a bit of a, a bit of a background into what sport you played? Yeah, of course. So my name is Lucy and I am 19 years old and I've grown up playing football. Mm -hmm. So I started at a really young age. My family loved football. My dad was really into football and he just brought me into the, the game. And I joined uh, my first team whenever I was P1 and it was Lisburn Youth the boys football team and I played for them and then I moved to Hillsborough boys so I played boys football for the first until I was about 14 and then at the age of eight I then moved into the Northern Ireland uh, women's development squad so I played for them growing up and then moved to Linfield ladies when I got to too old for boys football yep. um, and yeah so I was just playing for club and country really really enjoying football just loving it and was starting to progress into getting a wee bit more serious um, just heading across the water for different things like trials and so forth with Chelsea and a few other clubs um, and then yeah I was just loving football and yeah I feel like that leads into your next yeah, question. So good, uh, good start so going in uh, into the deep questions now so uh, what, what stopped you from playing sports? Yeah so whenever I was about 15 probably 14 nearly 15 I was just still playing football, but I started to feel a bit of pain in my hips mm -hmm. in the the, the socket, mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure what it was, but it started to get to the stage where it was too too sore to actually play. So I got it checked out and just yeah got loads of different examinations from physios and doctors and so forth, and they uh, diagnosed iliac crest apophthalmitis. It's called. Quite long and confusing. It's a, it's a, it's a big, uh, a big word. Do you yeah. To describe what it is. Yeah. So basically, it's a growth injury in my hips, and mm -hmm. it put me out of football for a year. So mm -hmm. I was in the gym doing um strength and conditioning, physio work to try and just to wait for it to heal and get better, basically. Yeah. Um, and then it got better, and I got back into sport. But the damage that had been done, it was really, really difficult to get back, and my muscles yeah. weren't the same as what they used to be. So I then developed a load of small injuries which turned into chronic pain mm -hmm. um, and also nerve damage. So I've got a lot of nerve damage in my body. Um, my nerves have just not been the same since. Mm -hmm. And it's a very complicated, more complicated than that, but yeah, no, I can't explain the, it. That's the short uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the uh, that's the short term as well. So yeah. uh well you've kind of already went into this. How uh how has it affected your physical health on like a day to day basis? Um are you doing anything to sort of combat that? So. Yeah. So just on a daily basis, like I'm in a lot of pain, um, mainly my pelvis area, so like my groin mm -hmm. and wraps right round, um, just a lot of pelvic pain. Um, but I also get pain scattered throughout the body a wee bit, just like nerve, nervy pain, so it's like a sharp shooting pain. Yep. So obviously it's 24-7, um, it also really it interrupts my sleep, mm -hmm. so I find it really, really difficult to sleep. I'd wake up in the middle of the night and wake up really early, uh, it takes a while for me to get to sleep. So it impacts me in that way, but it also just impacts because I can't play sport anymore mm -hmm. and I can't do what I used to love doing mm -hmm. because I'm in so much pain. Um, and obviously it's just got implications for everything whenever yeah. you're in 24-7 pain. Yeah. Um, to combat it, uh, well, I'm still seeking answers mm -hmm. and I'm dealing with a lot of top doctors to try and get yep. to the bottom of it. Um, so that's what I'm doing at the moment, doing different physio exercises just to try, try my hardest to keep moving so that I don't cause any like more problems yep. um, I'm just trying really hard just to, yourself to active, beat it yeah. keep myself yeah. active so I do a lot of upper body in the gym uh, just to keep myself active and then I've been trying to get into cycling but it's sort of can flare up but yeah, swimming's quite hit. good for me so yeah. I do a lot of swimming I was going to say I was told to do the swimming for my uh, hydrotherapy I think it is isn't it? yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I was told to do the hydrotherapy for my knee just get it moving again just yep. to get a bit of uh, muscle memory kicking back in so next question and um, arguably the the biggest question how has this affected your mental health is there anything you want to open up about or yeah well i mean it's had a massive impact yeah. on my mental health going from being one of the top footballers in northern ireland loving football thinking i'm going to make a professional mm -hmm. to my whole life just completely falling apart yeah. i didn't know what what was happening um, like football was your number one football, in life, yeah, yeah it's the number one. Football was number yeah. one, so I didn't didn't know what to do with myself basically. Yeah, no, it's fine. Um, and then that caused a lot of difference, so I just got really frustrated because it's it was chron turned chronic and I just could not get rid of it. Yeah. Find it difficult to explain it to other people because I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Um, 
just loads of different failed treatments like I had hip surgery it hasn't worked had loads of different injections and other surgeries which haven't worked so it's mm -hmm. just getting frustrating um, and then I've kind of I, I went through a few periods of like bad depression yeah uh, just couldn't get myself out of out of it um, but I eventually did and I each time I always do get myself out but um, that was for two years I really struggled with my mental health mm -hmm. and I'm doing a lot a lot better now I've oh, good. Um, come to acceptance but at the time probably whenever I was about 15, 15 to 17 mm -hmm. was when I was really really bad I yeah. hadn't accepted it I was just frustrated didn't know what to do with myself yeah it was just really gutting yeah. to be honest yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so next question sort of tying into the, the mental health aspect what uh, what did you end up doing to sort of combat that mental health and uh, how did it affect you and like are you still doing it on a day to day basis or have yeah. you stopped doing it now? So I think a big aspect of it is my faith. I mm -hmm. I'm a Christian and I believe that God has a plan in mm -hmm. all of this and I know that it's for my for the greater good. Um and I've just really clung on to this. And instead of running away from God during this, as some people probably would, mm -hmm. because it's a really difficult situation, I've actually decided to run to him and I know that he gives me the help that I need to get through and the strength. Um, so that's been the main reason that I, how I've combated it. Mm -hmm. um, also just choosing each day to get up and try my best yeah. and just mm -hmm. keep, keep going, keep struggling through. That's another really, really great way. Yeah, and just being really positive, mm -hmm. hanging around with friends, been really, really great for me. And even through it, like no one would have known that I had depression because I was just always really joyful on the outside. I just kept myself upbeat, kept myself busy. That's a really good yeah, one, yeah. keeping yourself busy. So yeah, I just literally didn't have a spare minutes. Anytime I had a spare minute, that's, that's when I got sad. Yeah, so I just no, kept myself enough. with people, yeah. just constantly doing stuff. So those are the main ways I combated it. Again, sort of already answer this, but tying into the next question, mm -hmm. are you doing anything else instead of sport? Obviously, you said friends and keeping yourself busy. Do you mind going yeah. into a bit more detail on that? Yeah, so those are the main ones. But um, now that I'm not, I know that I'm not going to have a career in football. Mm -hmm. I've now decided to do primary teaching. Yeah. So I'm studying to be a primary school teacher, which has given me another focus, which is good. Right, um, right. and coaching. I really love coaching mm -hmm. football. Um, so I'm just pouring in my knowledge to other people really yeah. so yeah primary teaching really enjoying it and yeah have hanging out doing, with friends have you been doing anything for that primary teaching like uh obviously you're out strong yeah so down there how many times a, a week are you in class then? well i'm in class every day, every day but i've also had placement blocks and stuff mm. so uh it's a, it's a good load of work but it's I'm sure, keeps I'm sure. me busy anyway how long uh, how long was the placement so the placement was seven weeks. Seven weeks. Seven okay. weeks. It's once a year for seven weeks. Yep. And then, yeah, for the four years that you're there. Very good, very good. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, it was good. Very good, it very good. good. And uh, just finally, would you yeah. have any advice for people who are going through sort of the same situation as yourself? How would you give them any advice to combat that? Um, yeah. Obviously, you've given some advice yourself, but... Um, Honestly, just stick at it. Stay stick positive. It. Try your best to look at the positives in it um, and just know that... Yeah, it's not going to be forever and you also will come to terms of acceptance mm -hmm. as well and the first few years are the hardest yeah. um, and even for someone in a short term injury because I've had those in the past too where yeah. you're, you're only out for six weeks mm -hmm. well, but like a lifetime. Yeah, yeah, just purely because you're um, getting behind yeah. and your other friends are progressing forward, and then yeah, you're but uh, just hang in there and hang keep battling on. and also do your physio Perfect Yeah so, that was Lucy's story. Now we're going to take a look at Ben's story, who had a prominent career in football, playing for many different clubs, but again, due to an injury, was unable to continue playing the sport he loved. Here's his story.
So for my next interview, I'm joined by my good friend Ben. Uh, ben, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a bit about yourself and tell us what sports you play. Um, so yeah, my name's Ben, as Davey's already said. Um, I'm 19, I study software engineering at Queen's. Um, first year, just finished first year. Um, yes, sports I play. So I grew up playing football all my life. Um, from a very young age, played for various teams from Lisburn. Um, and I also, I'm big into running. Um, so I would run quite a lot. Um, 5Ks, 10Ks. 15 case, also done a half marathon. Um, so yeah, just play f football for fun now. Um, run just to keep myself fit and mentally stable as well. Um, enjoy other sports like tennis, um, etc. Okay. Golf as well. Perfect. Uh, so what stopped you from playing sports? So I know you obviously do running and football as well. So tell us what stopped you playing football first and then we'll okay. do running after you. Okay. So. so what stopped me playing football? So as I said, I grew up playing football from a very young age um, and there was this was a very stupid thing to do but um, I jumped down stairs whenever I was second year and um, basically I had twisted ligaments so I would pulled my ligaments um, and this problem was ongoing for about two, two years to be honest um, first of all initially I let it rest for six months um, and then it felt okay went back to football, which was, went back too early, and then um, went into a tackle and it went again. Um, so it was just constant ongoing um, issues with it. It was never fully okay. It was always really, really sore throughout the match, throughout training, after the match, after training. I was just always in constant pain um, on my right ankle because of the torn ligaments. So uh, that's the football aspect. So what happened on the, the running aspect? So running, um, I would have started running after my injury with my ankle. Mm -hmm. That was just a way to, a different sport, a way to help me stay mentally uh, stable. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I would have done park run, 5Ks, mm -hmm. 10Ks, which were all okay. Like my ankle was fine yeah. to run, which was really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, and then I got the notion that I wanted to do a marathon. Because I loved running. As you do, as you yeah. do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I loved running, so I did. Um, so yeah, I, I just signed up for the Belfast Marathon 2022. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just started training in... Was, so Belfast Marathon was May. Mm -hmm. And started training in January. Yep. So uh, I was flat out training while at school. Mm -hmm. So it was it was obviously kind of difficult to balance it. Yeah. Um, so I was... Very intense. I was going to say you training. were doing this with your uh, levels, same yeah. Time. So, yeah. So, I was very intense running a uh, training program, running maybe four or five times a week. Mm -hmm. Um, and to be honest, I think that's what caused the problem. Mm -hmm. Just the constant too much over yeah, too training. Much stress, yeah. Too much over training on the the joints. Mm -hmm. Um, for road run was wasn't good, and I didn't give enough time for my body to rest. Yeah. Um, and this caused multiple injuries to be honest during the marathon training I had a, a foot injury in my left foot mm -hmm. um, un unrelated to the ankle really um, had to change up footwear for that mm -hmm. um, also had a thigh injury which was caused a minor problem which kind of set me back a lot during the marathon training mm -hmm. and the main one that put me out completely of not being able to do the marathon was after the half marathon mm -hmm. during training I just came home and was walking down the stairs and felt my right knee just go mm -hmm. and it was pain awful. Yeah. So I just think it, it's called runner's knee. It's called. Mm -hmm. So it's just from over training. Yeah. Was it sort of like a pop almost? The uh, sort of when you felt it go. Or, yeah. Yeah. We went and like it was clicking and it was just yeah. not in good shape. Mm -hmm. And I did rest it for a while. Tried to ease myself back into, in the hope of doing the marathon, but it it just didn't work. Yeah. And unfortunately, I couldn't do the marathon. Mm -hmm. So I can. So that's what caused me running and also the ankle football. Yeah. So how did this affect your, your physical health? I'm sure that not being able to do that much exercise anymore sort of affected you in a, on a physical aspect. Is there anything you Yeah, well, the, the ankle well, affected me in a physical way where now I can't go back to playing football. Well, I just feel that I couldn't go back to playing football. Mm -hmm. I play for fun just, but yeah. for a proper team, I just don't think I could go back and play. Yeah. I was going to say, just if somebody gives another 
a hard tackle, yeah. I just feel like it would go, yeah. and I always feel kind of scared to go into a tackle, which mm -hmm. is not good either. Yeah. So just for my safety, no, I just decided that I wouldn't mm -hmm. go back to Pimper Boss. So from a physical point of view, health-wise, um, my ankle has stopped me from playing for a team um, again. But the good thing is that it's allowed me to the surgery has allowed me to still be able to play five side, seven side, yeah. um, just for fun, you know. Um, from a running perspective, the knee, it's it's affected my physical health because mm. it's just an ongoing problem. Yeah. So, for example, the marathon obviously was this knee happened, twenty twenty two, and now it's twenty twenty three. It's still feeling. And every now and again, it just still goes go, a yeah. few times. So it's just about building up strength to yeah. building up strength and exercise, mm -hmm. physio, etc. Uh, so how did this affect your, your mental health? I'm sure not being able to play for a football team sort of affected you as well when you're saying your mates sort of did and even obviously had the, the dream of running the Belfast Marathon yeah. and then obviously not being able to do that. I'm sure that was quite uh, quite heartbreaking. So Yeah, well, from a football perspective, the ankle injury just it just really shattered me, to be mm -hmm. honest, because it was just an ongoing problem yeah. from second year. So I was like, growing up playing football, I was... Mad about football, yeah. as you can see behind me. Um, mad <laughs> about football, um, and yet to be honest, it just it just really affected me because I wasn't able to train, wasn't able to play matches, um, very much as much as I used to, mm -hmm. and now I can't at all. Um, so it just affected me from a mental point of view because I seen all my friends do it, as you yeah. said. Yeah. Um, seen people growing up that I, teams I played for, they were able to just go and play. Mm -hmm. um, for high level, yeah, and I absolutely loved playing football, and like taking that away from me was difficult mm -hmm. during that time. Um, so from a mental point of view, the the ankle really really affected me. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from a running point of view, I think this was actually worse. I was affected more oh. mentally okay. for the running, mm -hmm. um, because I trained so 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 hard for the yeah. Belfast Marathon. I I put every effort into it. Mm -hmm. As soon as I signed up. I put every effort into it. I was going to say, I, I, so I put time your training programme, so I was full flat out. Like, I so. put time aside, yeah. I, I put my studies aside, yeah. and I just I just went for it to try and get a good time. Yeah. Um, what time are you in for, sorry? Three and a half, three and in half. around three and a half, because mm -hmm. I ran the half marathon in 1 hour 43. Oh, far enough. Um, so yeah, no, for the knee, the running, not able to do the Belfast marathon, mm -hmm. it affected me. Even more than the football, yeah. Because I put so much time, mm -hmm. so much effort into training every day of the week, yeah. Um, and recovery as well. I put so much time. I was getting ice baths mm -hmm. to try and help my muscles recover. Yeah. And I was just putting so much time and so much effort mm -hmm. into the um hope of being able to do the marathon and say that I've done the marathon, mm -hmm. but it, it it didn't work out, and that really affected me from a mental point of view because I put so much work in, mm -hmm. and and it didn't work out, but. Mm -hmm. So you've talked about your ankle and your knee. You have talked about briefly there about the the ice baths for the muscle recovery. So what are you doing for your knee and for your ankle? Is there any like physical therapy you're doing or any strength and conditioning? What are you doing to sort of help yourself? Well, initially with the ankle, um, the surge I had to get surgery, mm -hmm. and that's what I initially did, and it worked right mm -hmm. about ninety percent. But it's still it's still there. It's yeah. still sore. That's still why I can't go back to football. Wee, yeah. Wee still easy to roll on. It's just a bit weak, you know. So that's what I did initially, and then it was just about strengthening it with physio mm -hmm. and getting it stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. But I, it it will never be fully strong again. It will be always about ninety percent. Yeah. Um, and I've had ongoing issues with it as well after even after the surgery, which is kind of different yeah. or difficult. Sorry. Um, in terms of the knee. Um, what am I doing to help it? Well, first of all, initially I went to physio mm -hmm. to try and help it. Um, the physio was brilliant, gave me... Was there a lot of sessions of it? Was it a one-off sort of thing or was it weekly or monthly or...? It, it was a couple of times. A couple of times, okay. So with the knee it was fine because she just gave me exercises to do yeah. and I was just able to do them. I was going to say, sort of like do it yourself sort of? Sort yeah, of yeah. Thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I was just able to do them exercises um and and rest was a big part of it so yeah. it was mm -hmm. trying to get back um but that didn't work out mm -hmm. and now um if i feel my knee go just rest yeah sort of don't do it rest anymore. yep mm -hmm. and keep trying to build it stronger and stronger with yeah. those exercises that physio's giving me mm -hmm. uh are you doing any other any other sort of sports you said at the very start as well yeah 
enjoy playing tennis, so you play yeah. any other sports, gym, obviously celebrate going out runs, so yeah. Anything else um like so tennis, yeah, mm -hmm. I'd enjoy tennis playing with my mates a few few um few weeks mm -hmm. um in Belfast and it's just great. Um because it's fine, my ankle's completely fine, yeah. just running it's 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 nothing too strenuous. No, the, knee, the knee's okay in it as well. And um gym as well. Mm -hmm. I love the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's a really good way to mentally say, keep help myself, keep focused. myself strong mm -hmm. um, with the gym as well because obviously that's got nothing to do with the ankle or the knee so just training the upper body is just, it's just really really good mm -hmm. um, to get myself to the gym and get myself feeling a wee bit better yeah. you know um, and as well I play mm -hmm. golf as well mm -hmm. um, which is really really fun because yeah. obviously it's just walking. I was going to say you get a nice wee bit of walking done as well. Exactly. So, so it's awesome. still exercise. Um, yeah. It's still a sport. Yeah. It's obviously not my favourite favourite sport. It's not my main sport as yeah. football would be. Well, but uh, it's still a sport. A I'm, still, background I'm still able to do it. Hobby does. Um, hobby does. With the ankle. So, so uh, would you have any advice for people? Obviously if people don't know you're a Christian as well. Uh, is there a, a Bible verse or something off the top of your head that you'd like to share? The, the fact that having God there, having mm -hmm. my faith there, really, really helps me knowing that God um, uses every situation for good yep. and knowing that He has a higher plan and a, a higher way than us. Um, mm -hmm. And knowing that just really, really helps and that's the advice I would give to anyone. Mm -hmm. If you're going through that, just look for God and seek Him because He is there. Um, there's a verse in the Bible that says, draw close, draw near to um, me and I will draw near to you. Mm -hmm. So if you draw near to God, he will come close to you and generally during this time I've really felt that and felt an, a supernatural peace about it as well. Perfect. Well thank you very much for your time. Much no, appreciated. You. So, you're welcome. So, as we come to the end of this mini documentary, I just hope that anyone watching who has gone through or is going through the same sort of struggles as myself and the two other people in this documentary, I just hope that you find the courage to, to speak up and talk to someone about it. This can either be friends, family members, parents, guardians, just anyone who's willing to talk. This can either be therapists, counsellors or any professionals in the business as well. So I just thank you for watching this documentary I just know that you're not alone in this. At the end of the documentary I'm going to leave a number up on the screen, the lifeline for mental health support. It's very helpful and has helped thousands of men and women across the world deal with their problems.